Welcome to the Gunbreaker 1 to 90 leveling skills guide. In this guide, we'll cover all of your skills as you're trained to be punished for grinding better than the rest of them, but also hopefully kill your enemies along the way. Watch as you go from this to this. This series is framed in the mindset of players completely new to Final Fantasy XIV or the MMO genre in general, or generally still inexperienced. In that same vein, this will merely be an overview of the actions and how to use them. Optimal rotations are better left to their own in-depth videos just due to how much complexity is involved in perfect openers and overall rotations. This is not meant to be a purely optimal guide. If you wish to be optimal at level cap, there are further places you can research your job on. We will, however, be crafting rotations as we go to help new players understand what goes through creating openers and give them a foothold to push themselves into being able to do it on their own. The goal is to draw players in on the ground level so they can make strides to improve themselves. All tooltips will be shown at the level cap for each section. Level 60 for the level you start at, level 70 for Stormblood stuff, level 80 for Shadowbringers levels, and level 90 for Endwalker. I also recommend all players add Sprint and Limit Break to the hotbars, both found in the Journal tab of your Actions menu. And as how my hotbars build, it'll make sense at 90. Just put skills in your hotbars in a way you feel comfortable using as you are leveling. Everyone has their own way of doing things. If you want more info on how I set up my UI, check the description or the card in the corner for a video on it. And keep the following in mind, patches can change jobs still. Be sure to check the description for any patch notes for minor potency changes or skill changes or any other special notes. With that all out of the way, let's begin. Gunbreaker is the most DPS-like of the tanks. Big damage, big explosions, and the most buttons used for fighting. Generally, your entire button count is higher, having a bunch of defensive cooldowns too. So despite being one of the most busy rotationally, you're no less tank than your peers. Just be careful not to get too lost in doing damage you forget to need to be using all those cooldowns. Gunbreaker also ends up being the butt of a lot of jokes due to the effect of one of their skills and players who refuse to communicate. Communication and knowledge of your toolkit are even more important than the usual level of knowledge that you might like. You even have a couple targeted abilities for defending your allies instead of yourself, where you can afford it. To obtain the Gunbreaker job, you must complete your level 10 class quest and be level 60. That's it! Aside from owning the Shadowbringers expansion, that is. With this done, head to the Gridania Aetherite Plaza. The Gunbreaker job quest is right there. Let's get into the finer details of each skill. Gunbreaker starts all the way at level 60, which means we have most of our toolkit already. This includes all of our role actions. These are as important as the rest of your toolkit, but for brevity and due to having a video for it already, I will say go check that video. It is in the corner and the description if you need to know how to use these. But as hopefully your second tank, you've already experienced these. Level 1, Tank Mastery. All tanks come with this. This reduces all damage by 20% as a base. Your max HP will also be higher than other rolls. The strength bit is a misnomer just about, you're going to be weaker than a DPS still. Level 10, Royal Guard. Like the other tanks, Royal Guard is our enmity stance. When it is on, the UI element we have will light up. All the same rules apply as with those tanks. You want to put this on for every single duty that aren't multiple tanks for. Don't fight your co-tanks for enmity. Work together and try to keep second place enmity when you aren't the main tank. And remember, anytime you go into a lower level duty and hit a level sync, enmity stances need to be turned back on, even if it was on to begin with. I'm keeping it short since I really do hope this is your second tank, or at least start with lower level content to get your footing with making sure you keep enmity stance running. Maybe try a level 50 trial to test it with multiple tanks and not stealing aggro. Level 1, 4, 26, and 52, Keen Edge, Brutal Shell, Solid Barrel, and Enhanced Brutal Shell. This is our basic combo, 1, 2, 3. You want to always complete your combos in order, not skip around. Keen Edge is a 150 potency hit, Brutal Shell is a 240 potency hit, and Solid Barrel is 320 potency. Solid Barrel has an extra effect we'll talk about in a moment, but Brutal Shell also has Enhanced Brutal Shell as a trait. Brutal Shell comes with a 200 potency heal no matter what level you are. Enhanced Brutal Shell takes this innate heal and also places a shield on you for the value of the heal. Because of how small the potency this is, you're all but guaranteed to use the entire shield's potency. Anytime you're using a single target combo, you're getting a 400 potency heal every three hits. 
You don't have to do anything special for this, but it's worth noting your survival is a little bit higher than you might expect thanks to the small heals and shields. Level 30, Cartridge Charge and Burst Strike. As I said, Solid Barrel has an additional effect. Executing it will give you a cartridge to the powder gauge. That's the two smaller dots on our job gauge. We can store up to two cartridges at once. If we finish a combo after, we will lose out on that extra cartridge. Cartridges are spent on Burst Strike. It does a 380 potency strike to a single target. That's a bit better than even Solid Barrel. When you have cartridges, spend them. You can store them for a double hit, two in a row if you wish. There's also a few reasons to hold onto some cartridges for burst damage, including party buffs and... Level 2, No Mercy. This is a buff that ups our damage by 20% for 20 seconds. It has a short 60 second cooldown, meaning we'll have it up a third of our combat time. This is a reason you might hold onto some of your burst strikes. They are your biggest hits, and so you want to put them under important buffs like that. Otherwise, you should be using No Mercy on cooldown. You would avoid using it only if a fight is very close to over. Otherwise, again, just use it on cooldown. Level 10 and level 40, Demon Slice and Demon Slaughter. These are our AoE area of effect attacks. Both have a size of 5 yams in radius. Demon Slice is 100 potency hit to all enemies around you, and Demon Slaughter, 160 potency. On two or more enemies, your AoE is stronger than your main combo, but more simply, worry about it being three or more enemies. If there are three or more enemies, use your demon combos. You also want to be using No Mercy during your AoE. It's an extra 20% damage on top of what you already do. And if you're getting confident and doing big pulls, you're using your AoE for a large group of enemies. That multiplied by 20% is just all the better. Don't sleep on it in big trash pulls. They're what is the hard part of dungeons anyway. On top of this, Demon Slaughter will give us powder cartridges. The issue here is we can't really spend them for AoE. On three or more enemies, we're doing bigger hits than our burst strikes, and we won't be getting an AoE cartridge spender until much later. As a result, our AoE will be gaining us gauge that we can only use at the end of an encounter when only one or two enemies remain. If there's an enemy or two that are beefier than the rest, at the end, this will help take them down. Make sure to group enemies together tightly, then spam your AoE. Just hold on to that powder until the time for using it properly comes up, no matter how tempting the big boom will be. Level 18, Danger Zone! On a short 30 second cooldown, Danger Zone! Do the 250 potency hit to a target. Very basic, use it on cooldown, even in AoE. It comes up often being only a 30 second cooldown. It's really quick. On top of this, because No Mercy is a 60 second cooldown, every other use of Danger Zone will be buffed by No Mercy. Timed with openers, that's easy to achieve. Level 54, Sonic Break. This skill has a few unique aspects. Firstly, it has a 60 second cooldown, but also triggers the global cooldown of all of our weapon skills. Because of this, skill speed will lower the cooldown of Sonic Break. So when performing your rotation, you need to keep that in mind. It will be beneficial to not miss time using Sonic Break as it comes off cooldown early. As for the skill itself, it has two effects. Firstly, a basic 300 potency of damage to a target. Secondly, a 30 second long dot, damage over time effect. It deals 60 potency of damage. With dots working on a server tick, it ticks every 3 seconds for a total 10 ticks, or 600 potency on the dot, with 900 total potency for using this. That is an extremely big hit. Once again, just use it on cooldown and you'll be doing huge damage. Even up to six enemies at once, this is worth using. Seven or more is when AoE starts to beat it out. It's that strong. In bosses, this is an obvious gimme, and it's very easy to get off onto bosses because it does not break combos. Both your main combo and Gnashing Fang combo will not be broken if you use Sonic Break in the middle of them. Then further, remember No Mercy, both skills are 60 seconds long for a cooldown. This is why you want to be careful about skill speed making Sonic Break faster. Too soon, you'll use it before No Mercy. You definitely want an extra 20% damage on 900 potency. We want our buff going before our big hits. Level 56, Rough Divide. This is a skill with charges, meaning you can store multiple uses. Two of them, each with a 30 second charge time. The moment you use one charge, the timer starts going for getting it back. In total, that would be 60 seconds for getting both charges back off of cooldown if used immediately. 
Rough Divide itself is a 150 potency hit that works as a gap closer. You jump right up to the enemy from up to 20 yams away. This is good for those cases where a boss forces you to run far away to dodge mechanics. You could do an attack, run out of range of the enemy to dodge, then immediately Rough Divide back into range. Quickly getting into range has the benefit of increased uptime. The less time you're out of range, the more damage you do. The quicker the boss dies, and the less damage you take. The better your team's damage, the less mechanics and tank busters you have to eat with your face. A gap closer also comes with the danger of pulling with it. Positioning bosses is a very important job as a tank. If you pull with Rough Divide, you could end up positioning the boss poorly. You want them to generally be placed in the middle of arenas. Try to avoid using Rough Divide to pull bosses. Trash pulls could be a bit better, but don't get too far ahead. You can get pretty far ahead of your healer with good usage of Rough Divide. It gives you good time to position yourself for grouping all enemies up, but it could put you out of range of heals. Even a smart, quick healer could easily fall behind. So pause for a moment if you see yourself getting too far ahead. Otherwise, use these mostly on cooldown. You can hold onto them so you do the same as your other skills. 60 second total cooldown means you can put both uses of Rough Divide under no mercy. No reason to hold onto them in most cases, but if you know the boss you're fighting has a lot of knockbacks or gap closing needed, hold onto one of them at least for closing that gap. Level 60, Gnashing Fang, Savage Claw, and Wicked Talon. Gnashing Fang is similar to Sonic Break, as in it is a weapon skill with a cooldown that gets lower with more skill speed. Otherwise, it normally has a 30 second cooldown. It also has a few other interactions though. Firstly, you can only use it when you have a powder cartridge. It costs one to begin the skill. Secondly, upon using Gnashing Fang and dealing 380 potency to an enemy, it changes to Savage Claw. This is a self-contained three button combo. Because you have a lot of other buttons by 90, Savage Claw will deal 460 potency to a target, then change to Wicked Talon. Wicked Talon is the final hit of the combo, dealing 540 potency of damage to a target. Each of these hits is increasingly stronger than Solid Barrel. You are going to always want to have one powder cartridge stored, not for Burst Strike, but for your Gnashing combo. This is even stronger than AoE on up to three enemies. Not that you should be thinking that deep about it. On bosses or otherwise single targets, absolutely make sure you're using this combo. Then again, because it is a 30 second cooldown normally, every second use of it can be put under no mercy. We're cramming a lot of stuff into No Mercy, and it's going to get even busier as we level up. Level 15, Lightning Shot. This is our ranged attack. It deals a small 150 potency of damage to a single enemy. This is generally a poor choice of attack outside of pulling. You never want to be out of range of enemies often at all, and Rough Divide drags you back in fast. This is your main pulling tool. It helps you drag enemies towards the group as you all approach. This is especially important for putting bosses near the middle of arenas. Lightning shot them, and they will start moving up to you. With trash mobs, this has the same effect and allows you to use an AoE move to hit all enemies sooner. It's not quite as important though. You can also use this while running to the next group of enemies to maintain the enmity lead. Generally though, consider this an enemy positioning tool rather than an attacking option. The times that it is a valid attacking option are few and far between, despite what you might think. Stay in enemy range where you can. Rough divide back in when you have to get out. Keep your uses of this to a minimum where you can. Level 6, 38, and 45, Camouflage, Nebula, and Aurora. These are our first Gunbreaker specific defensive cooldown abilities. Camouflage is a 90 second cooldown that reduces all damage by 10% and increases our parry rate by 50%. It will last for 20 seconds. Parrying is a lot like blocking, reduces any parried attack by 15%. These parries are random. The parries aren't guaranteed, but the rate is very high. You can also only parry physical attacks. A number of boss hits, multiple mechanics, or even tank busters that are close together, though this is a rare occurrence. Without the parry, it won't alone make a huge difference, but the difference it does make definitely matters. Nebula, meanwhile, is a lot more significant. On a 2 minute cooldown and lasting for 15 seconds, this reduces all damage by a much bigger 30%. This can take care of most tank busters by itself. Once tank busters get stronger, pairing this with anything else should do it. 
Maybe Camouflage could come in with it. Anywhere else with major damage is also a good place for this. Big wall-to-wall -wall pulls? Nebula is an easy choice. Reducing all damage from 7, 8 enemies by 30% is a big shift in your survival. No sense sitting on it when you're in big danger after all. Finally, we have Aurora. This is something more for incidental damage. This is a heal over time or hot. It gives yourself a regen of 200 potency for 18 seconds. That's 6 ticks or a total 1200 potency of healing. This is a decent amount of self-healing even with your healing power being lower than an actual healer. The issue is obviously, it's 18 seconds. If you need the healing right now because you're low, it's already too late. Once you start taking little bits of damage, you want to be throwing up Aurora. You can see the effectiveness pretty decently in a small pool. The regen will keep your HP relatively steady compared to no regen. In bigger pools, you won't notice it doing work, but it is helping keep you alive. Pair it with another cooldown like Rampart to help keep your HP a bit steadier for the healer. In bosses, Aurora alone will take care of auto attacks a lot of the time. The healer may not need to heal you at all until a tank buster happens and does half your health with a single strike. You can also Aurora for this point to keep your HP steady for the auto attacks after. But otherwise it's again for incidental damage. Incidental can also apply to allies as you can actually put this on other party members too. If a DPS takes a big hit or such and is low on HP, you can help save them by tossing them an Aurora. The healer will need to notice you through the Aurora at them to not throw as much healing, but otherwise it can help out. More ideally and more likely to be of help is when you are the off tank. Your co-tank is the one holding the boss. You can throw them Aurora on cooldown to help keep them healed up. It's not a huge skill, but every little bit can help out. Level 50, Super Belied. This is our ultimate cooldown, our invulnerability. On a 6 minute cooldown, this automatically sets our HP to 1 in exchange for 10 seconds of near invincibility. The exceptions tend to just be raid mechanics in the high end, which would be wipes anyway. Otherwise, it will take no damage until it falls off. You might be tempted to only save this for emergencies. The issues here are twofold and have become a meme. The first is, if you wait for emergencies that never happen, you never use it. The second is if it was never an emergency to begin with. There's a meme in the community of Gunbreakers using Super Belied after White Mages use their Benediction, a full heal. You get into emergency level HP, hit Super Belied, after the White Mage purposefully let you get low to use Benediction. I prefer to be proactive with ultimate cooldowns, pulling wall to wall, I can go into it, pop no cooldowns, and when I get low HP, pop Super Belied. I will of course also tell the heal in my plan before I pull, so they don't waste time healing. Hey, I'm going to Super Belied, and they know they don't need to heal for a bit. They will need to heal when your HP hits 1 though. Throw some heals to bring you back up to max before the buff wears off. There's plenty of time between you using the buff and the buff falling off for them to give you any quick and easy heals with no fear. You can even use Aurora to help them out. Point is, we don't want to just ignore it. You're putting some trust on the healer to heal you after hitting Super Belied, but it's easier than making them heal you without it. Especially if the previous pool you used all your big cooldowns. Get used to the timing and you'll be a major contender as a tank. And that covers our starting toolkit. It's pretty beefy comparatively and lots more to consider than you might normally expect. Two combos, a buff, some other attacks, and the normal fix-ins for a tank. And that leads into Gunbreaker having some pretty busy openers. That includes right now. Let's build up our first opener and see what we can do. The goal of everything we do in openers is going to be shoving as much as we can into No Mercy. Usually this is safe and doesn't involve too much worrying about defensive cooldowns. This allows us to focus on the attacking, which is very busy later on. For now though, it's pretty simple to fit it all in. Pre-pull, Royal Guard, Lightning Shot, Keen Edge, Brutal Shell, Solid Barrel, No Mercy, Gnashing Fang, Danger Zone, Sonic Break, Rough Divide, Savage Claw, Rough Divide, Wicked Talon, Keen Edge, Brutal Shell, Solid Barrel, Burst Strike. I want to emphasize this initial lightning shot. As a main tank, you will want to use this for positioning bosses better. However, when you aren't the main tank, 
or positioning isn't a concern, you can skip this lightning shot as well as the Royal Guard. Turn that on later just for maintaining second in enmity so your party doesn't die. This brings us into a basic 1-2-3 combo to get us a powder cartridge. We will pop into No Mercy after and begin our Gnashing Fang combo and using our other skills. This specific pattern of attacks to start will be used all the way up to level 90. We're gonna always set up with a basic combo then do our burst. This is due to the pacing of our opener and for preparing for party buffs. We get a lot of extra damage for waiting for the party to give us even more power. We will begin with a weave in of Danger Zone as it is the higher potency between it and Rough Divide. Then we will use Sonic Break rather than continuing the gnashing combo. As mentioned, this will not break the gnashing combo. This serves an extra purpose. Both Gnashing Fang's cooldown and now Sonic Break's cooldown are both running while losing us nothing. After Sonic Break, we can weave in our first Rough Divide. We would have paired this with the Danger Zone technically, but we're sticking with single weaves for now to get you used to it. Once again, getting the cooldown running here at the least. We'll get back into the Gnashing combo with a Savage Claw into our second Rough Divide. From there, we finish the combo, then go back to our basic 1-2-3s. We can get in a Burst Strike right at the end, just barely under our raid buffs. And then we come to the end of the line. It's not too much to start, but there's a lot more to come later on. We're gonna quickly get into double weaving, but for now, let's get into doing a karaoke opener for this one. Karaoke openers are where I speak the skills as they are used, rather than just in order. If you hear a skill name begin to be said, the game has started to use it. Expect a bit of cutting myself off though. Pre-pull. Royal Guard. Lightning Shot. Keen Edge. Brutal Shell. Solid Barrel. No Mercy. Gnashing Fang. Danger Zone. Sonic Break. Rough Divide. Savage Claw. Rough Divide. Wicked Talon. Keen Edge. Brutal Shell. Solid Barrel. Burst Strike. That's the start of Gunbreaker's Toolkit. Nothing too intense, but enough to be overwhelming to begin with. Just remember to hold onto a charge for your Gnashing Fangs when it comes off of cooldown. We want to use that as soon as possible. Find your footing with the rotation, and then you can level up a bit to get into the Stormblood skills. Level 62. Bow Shock. On a 60 second cooldown, this is our second dot and an AoE one at that. This has a 5 yarm range and does 150 potency of damage to all enemies in that range. They will also receive a 50 potency dot for 15 seconds. That dot amounts to 300 potency or a 450 potency hit in total. As usual, put this under no mercy. You're going to use this on bosses for a free bit of damage. It's a decently strong hit with more than Danger Zone and Rough Divide together. But of course, being an AoE, you want to make sure to hit as many enemies as you can with it. When using it in trash, make sure your positioning counts extra hard. All your AoEs are circles, but even tightly grouped enemies might be out of range if you aren't moving into the middle of the pack after grouping them up. Group up enemies tight, move into the middle of them, and pop Bow Shock while No Mercy is up. Then get back to dodging AoEs and getting your mitigations running. Level 64, Heart of Light. On a 90 second cooldown, Heart of Light will reduce magic damage for you and all allies within 15 yams of you for 15 seconds. The damage will be reduced by 10%. This is your anti-raid-wide or mechanic skill. Most mechanics in raid-wide damage are magical attacks, though some exceptions exist. There's no real way to tell those exceptions without just researching or paying very close attention to animations. But back to the concrete information, this is a good defensive maneuver. Raid-wide damage hurts, especially in 8-player trials and raids. Harder content levels especially. When a boss is preparing to hurt the entire party, throw a part of light to reduce the damage. You can get quite a number of these out, so don't just sit on it. You're going to want to also focus on the hardest hitting points of fights. A basic raid wide you can probably just get through with nothing, but the heal is putting up a small shield. Or even nothing at all. Much more major raid wide joy mechanics are the ideal places for this, especially if there's multiple instances of damage within those 15 seconds. If you are unsure of those spots, just throw it out for any spots you feel are more dangerous than others. Reduce the damage of whatever is going to be hurting the entire party. Even a little bit of help is going to be nice for the healers. You may want to step inside of bosses a little bit when you go to use this though. Depending on how big the boss is, you need those extra few steps to hit everyone in the group being spread out. Don't bother using this selfishly, Trash pools rarely have much magic damage, and it tends to only be a few enemies at most. 
Only if you know you can make use of a little bit of magic defense and the next boss is a decent trek away is it worth popping. Level 68, Heart of Stone. On a very short 25 second cooldown, this reduces the damage of you or a party member by 15% for 7 seconds. That's right, you can actually put this on other team members, and when you do, they will receive your Brutal Shell buff if you have it up. This is a nice little bonus, but not something you should really concern yourself with. It's a tiny extra bonus that you're either guaranteed to have, or all but guaranteed to not be able to use. This is your spammable cooldown, and spam it you will do. If it is available, you're using it. Big wall to wall pull? Pair Heart of Stone with something, say Nebula. After Nebula, you will Rampart, then pop Heart of Stone again. You can pair this with so many different cooldowns, and with how short the cooldown timer is, there's no reason not to. The same applies with Tank Busters. Would have popped Nebula with Rampart, can save Rampart for a different buster or such, which will also be paired with Heart of Stone. Every major thing you could want this around for, it will be available. Then there's using it on other players. Is it an 8 player duty and your co-tank is the main tank? When there's a tank buster about to hit them, throw them Heart of Stone to reduce the damage they take. You're not taking damage, might as well help out the person who is. They will greatly appreciate it, as will your healers. This also works to protect that one pesky DPS who keeps standing in all the AoEs and gathering Vuln stacks. The next time a raid wide happens, they're gonna take a lot of extra damage. When you see the cast, throw them Heart of Stone quick to potentially save their life. This will take a bit of skill to pull off since you need to be watching your team for their mistakes while not making your own, but it can be a major help to everyone. The only issue is the short timer. 7 seconds isn't nothing, but it's a short enough timer that you have to make sure not to throw it out too early. This is the closest we get to an emergency button thanks to the short cooldown, but you need to time it decently. Level 70, Continuation, Jugular Rip, Abdomen Tear, and Eye Gouge. This is the one and only job quest lock skill. It's worth a pretty significant power boost. Do your job quests and get this skill. Continuation is a very strange skill in that it is a combo, but also not. It's an ability, so it's something you can weave between your global weapon skills. It lights up when using certain weapon skills, namely your Gnashing Fang combo. Each hit in the combo will turn Continuation into another skill. Gnashing Fang turns it into Jugular Rip, Savage Claw into Abdomen Tear, Wicked Talon into Eye Gouge. These attacks do 200, 240, and 280 potency respectively, or an extra 720 potency every use of the Gnashing Fang combo. And you have to immediately follow up the Gnashing combo strikes with these. If you continue the combo without hitting continuation first, that continuation is lost. This includes all weapon skills, even Sonic Break. If you hit Sonic Break before continuation, the combo of continuation is lost. So now we're alternating between the gnashing combo button and continuation button. You can still interrupt the gnashing combo with things like Sonic Break, but don't forget the continuation first. That damage adds up really fast. And since we're speaking of damage, let's talk a new opener. The same rules apply as before, but now with two extra buttons. Four skills though. We're going to have to double weave, and there's only going to be more of it as we go on, so prepare yourself. Prey Pull, Royal Guard, Lightning Shot, Keen Edge, Brutal Shell, Solid Barrel, No Mercy, Gnashing Fang, Jugular Rip, Danger Zone, Sonic Break, Bow Shock, Rough Divide, Savage Claw, Abdomen Tear, Rough Divide, Wicked Talon, Eye Gouge, Keen Edge, Brutal Shell, Solid Barrel, First Strike. Starting from the Gnashing Fang, we have our first continuation, Jugular Rip. We can double weave this with Danger Zone to get the cooldown running. Same as before, we'll Sonic Break with Rough Divide after. This time though, we'll add in Bow Shock to make sure we're weaving that in. We want that damage running under all of the raid buffs. Then we're back to the Gnashing combo with Savage Claw, which has Rough Divide and a newly added Abdomen Tear. Make sure Eye Gouge is also used with Wicked Talon. And that gets us through all the changes. We have a basic combo and a burst strike at the end as normal. Front loading the double weaves gives us room at the end for using defensive cooldowns in preparation for any tank busters. And let's quickly go through the karaoke opener, then we can get back to looking at new skills. It's needed thanks to all these double weaves. Pre-pull, Royal Guard, 
Lightning Shot. Keen Edge. Brutal Shell. Solid Barrel. No Mercy. Gnashing Fang. Jugular Rip. Danger Zone. Sonic Break. Bow Shock. Rough Divide. Savage Claw. Abdomen Tear. Rough Divide. Wicked Talon. Eye Gouge. Keen Edge. Brutal Shell. Solid Barrel. Burst Strike. But that and Stormblood, with quite a number of very important additions. Now we'll do Shadowbringers, an expansion both empty and important at the same time. Level 72, Faded Circle. Finally! This is going to be how we use our cartridges in AoE. It took this long, but Faded Circle is a 5 yam AoE around ourselves that deals 290 potency to all enemies hit. All this time you've been sitting on your powder gauge in AoE, but now you want to shift modes to spend, spend, spend. You're going to be able to gain so many charges in AoE now that you aren't forced to just hold on to them. Two hit AoE combo for every charge. So if you were doing 10 attacks before, that would have been five charges and none of them able to be used for AoE. And while it shouldn't have been an issue before, you're going to have even less issues with keeping enmity on all the enemies. Level 76, Bloodfest. On a 90 second cooldown, this will grant us two cartridges, maxing out our gauge. That's all there is to it. Well, there's more that can be discussed, like not overcapping a gauge. We want to empty our cartridges before we hit Bloodfest. If we don't, we're gonna lose uses out of the Bloodfest. This is especially notable in AoE, since it only takes two weapon skills to get a charge. Use the Faded Circle charges you have, and use the Weaving Windows for Bloodfest. Then use two more Faded Circles. In single target, it's much easier to handle. Three hits for one charge, and you'll be spending them often on Gnashing Fang combos, which slows your rate of obtaining charges. Pop Bloodfest on cooldown for a nice boost to your damage, and enjoy the fireworks. Level 80, Danger Zone Mastery and Blasting Zone. This skill is all the same, but Blasting Zone is strangely far stronger. From 250 potency to a massive 700 potency hit. 700 potency every 30 seconds, on top of everything else you've been able to do. Use case is all the same. You've been using this in AoE already, I hope, and now you have more reason to. And so let's update the open it quick again. It's not much, but Bloodfest alone does change a thing or two. It's important to mention it, so let's do so. Pre-pull, Royal Guard, Lightning Shot, Keen Edge, Brutal Shell, Solid Barrel, No Mercy, Gnashing Fang, Blood Fest, Jugular Rip, Sonic Break, Blasting Zone, Bow Shock, Savage Claw, Abdomen Tear, Rough Divide, Wicked Talon, Eye Gouge, Rough Divide, Burst Strike, Burst Strike, Keen Edge, Brutal Shell, Solid Barrel. So here we are again. Stepping into the Gnashing Fang, we spend the charge we have. We can weave in Bloodfest and Jugular Rip to get the cooldown running and our charges capped back up. We'll Sonic Break as normal for Blasting Zone and Bow Shock to get those on cooldown. This pushes Rough Divide back to a double weave of Abdomen Tear and Wicked Talon. This takes care of all of our cooldowns. Thanks to Bloodfest, we are now sitting on two charges in our gauge, which means we can use two burst strikes while our buffs are still running, rather than just the one we would get at the end of the opener. But also that means there is no burst strike at the end, even though we will have a charge. Not even the solid barrel will make it into the no mercy window without a little bit of an extra investment into skill speed. So you can hold on to that charge for a moment for your next gnashing bang combo. Remember, we want to be able to use Gnashing Fang constantly and on cooldown. And while this does have some changes, I'm not going to karaoke it. We can save that one for at 90. There's a few other changes there we get that make it a higher priority for deeper opener overviews. That and it being our current level cap. Otherwise, it's Endwalker time. Level 82, Heart of Stone Mastery and Heart of Corundum. Before talking about all the effects the skill has, let's remember that Heart of Stone, and by extension its upgrade Heart of Corundum, can be put on anyone in the party. Heart of Corundum is a huge upgrade on Heart of Stone. 
it is still a 15% damage reduction, but now it is 8 seconds long. That extra 1 second of leeway does matter, and does help make sure you time it correctly. It also matters because of the length of the next buff. Clarity of Corundum is also granted, reducing damage by a further 15% for 4 seconds. Timing has become even more strict, but far more beneficial. This small window of time is 28% of damage reduction, and yes, 28%. Mitigations when stacked come with diminishing returns, so 15% and 15% is more like 28%. Only a 2% difference, but worth mentioning. Point is, this is nearly Nebula in power for 4 seconds. Any tank buster cowers at the sight of Clarity of Corundum, and obviously, trash mobs will do a lot less damage for those 4 seconds. But a third buff makes this even stronger. Catharsis of Corundum is given for 20 seconds. When those 20 seconds run out, or the player falls below 50% of their max HP, they will be given a 900 potency heal automatically. So let's say even with that 28% damage reduction, and anything else you use, you go from full HP to only 1 HP. You will automatically be healed before you even see your HP hit 1. The strength of the heal can vary a bit, but generally it's a really good boost of HP anytime it goes off. If you die, you will not get the Corundum heal since you're dead. But if for whatever reason you pop Super Bali during the 20 seconds, you will receive the heal the moment your HP gets set to 1. It's an interesting, but very niche interaction. Point is, try and time your Heart of Corundums better, but make sure you're continually using it as much as you can. It's worth far too much to ignore, now more than ever. Level 84, Enhanced Aurora. Aurora has been turned into a skill with charges. You can hold two uses of Aurora at once. You can continually ensure one charge is on cooldown and keeping your HP up, while you hold onto the other for making sure you have one around for significant consistent damage. Though normally you'll just be using these as normal. Two uses of this is definitely a boon, no question there. It's just less of a boon compared to other skills. Level 84, Melee Mastery. This is a simple but poorly worded boost to our main combo potencies. Keen Edge is boosted to 170 potency, while Brutal Shell and Solid Barrel are boosted to 120 potency each. What this doesn't say is that the comboed potencies of those latter skills is also boosted. Brutal Shell is now 260 potency, and Solid Barrel is 340 potency now. Just power otherwise. Level 86, Enhanced Continuation and Hyper Velocity. This is a change to continuation. In addition to a Gnashing Fang combo giving us continuation, Burst Strike now gives us Ready to Blast. This allows us to use continuation after Burst Strike to trigger Hyper Velocity. This is a 180 potency hit to a target. After the last 16 levels, you've gotten to use continuation a lot. Now get used to following up every Burst Strike with a continuation as well. Level 88, Cartridge Charge 2. This is a double upgrade. Both are Powder Gauge and Bloodfest have been upgraded to be three cartridges. We can hold up to three powder charges at a time, and Bloodfest will grant us the full three. This allows us to store a couple of charges for bigger burst window sections. If a party buff is coming up, or even just no mercy, we can hold onto those charges just for making sure they're all used under the buffs. Just remain careful about overcapping. Make sure to empty all charges before hitting Bloodfest, and try not to delay the use of it. The management you have to do has changed a little bit, but overall isn't too much different to get used to. Level 90, Double Down. This is going to be the real reason we got Card to Charge 2, however. On a 60 second cooldown that is affected by skill speed and also triggers the global cooldown, this is also an AoE of 5 yams around you. An extremely heavy hitting one at that, which is why it will cost you 2 cartridges to use. So make sure even more that this is under no mercy. The first enemy hit will take 1200 potency of damage, which is big. Also big is that all enemies after the first will take 960 potency of damage, nearly 1000 potency of damage to every single enemy you hit with this. You're not just holding onto your charges to hit 3 for no reason, you're making sure to keep a bunch of charges to have enough for the Gnashing Fang combo and double down. You don't want to delay either of these, and you want to make sure both are earned in no mercy. I'm repeating myself just because of how much damage these are worth, even in a boss fight situation. It takes a full gauge of three charges to achieve both, which means you're almost always going to be capping your gauge. 
But again, be wary of overcapping. There's a thin line to follow with making sure not to overcap, while not overusing Burst Strike to keep your resources in check. Which means our opener is going to be crafted in a way to make sure we can do this. Bloodfest is always going to be a bit of an issue for us, since it is a 90 second cooldown. Everything we do is 30 or 60 second cooldowns, except for that. So you need to get used to 90 second and 3 minute burst windows beyond this. But let's just focus on our opener and you can practice on from there. Pre-pull. Royal Guard. Lightning Shot. Keen Edge. Brutal Shell, Solid Barrel, No Mercy, Gnashing Fang, Blood Fest, Jugular Rip, Double Down, Blasting Zone, Bow Shock, Sonic Break, Rough Divide, Savage Claw, Abdomen Tear, Rough Divide, Wicked Talon, Eye Gouge, First Strike, Hyper Velocity, Keen Edge, Brutal Shell, Solid Barrel. Starting at No Mercy again, we Gnashing Fang and Bloodfest still. This puts us up to three charges in the gauge, which we can then immediately spend on Double Down, which gives us two weaving slots for Blasting Zone and Bow Shock. We still need Sonic Breakout too for the dot to run, and we have Rough Divide to still weave in. And if needed, we have the second weave window open for any defensives you might need. From there is basically the same for the rest of the Gnashing Fang combo. After, though, we will still have a leftover cartridge. This can be used for a burst strike into hyper velocity as party buffs are starting to wear off. Then we have just a little bit more time under No Mercy for one last combo. Once again, No Mercy will fall off at the end, and so we won't mention to use another burst strike. We'll save that for the next Gnashing Fang coming soon. There is a lot more to Gunbreaker rotations and such that can be gone over. This is a very much top-down overview of just the opener. That Bloodfest timer really does throw wrenches into things. Get a good handle on the opener, and you can see yourself improve on the rest of the rotation too. And there is a single weave opener too, but it's... a bit weird. And also will include double weaves anyway. So this is a good start even with some rough ping. So let's finish it off with one last karaoke opener. This is the busiest it gets with a bunch of different moving parts. But you can handle it just fine. Just be confident and practice the moves with a good hotbar layout. Pre-pull. Royal Guard, Lightning Shot, Keen Edge, Brutal Shell, Solid Barrel, No Mercy, Gnashing Fang, Bloodfest, Jugular Rip, Double Down, Blasting Zone, Bow Shock, Sonic Break, Rough Divide, Savage Claw, Abdomen Tear, Rough Divide, Wicked Talon, Eye Gouge, Burst Strike, Hyper Velocity, Keen Edge, Brutal Shell, Solid Barrel. There's an extreme lack of broken guns, and guns entirely, but at least you have a vibrating sword. Yes, that's actually what a gunblade is, a vibrating sword. Enjoy that info, and vibrating your enemies to death. Thank you for watching this Gunbreaker 1-90 leveling skills guide. Feel free to give feedback or ask questions on what might still be confusing to you. I am always seeking to improve, as should you. Don't stop with this guide, even if I succeeded in helping you improve. Please leave a rating, comment, sub, those really do help creators, or even go follow my Patreon. Have fun in your adventures across Eorzea, and may the power of Anandid Hogs lay waste to your enemies.